Okay, welcome. This is a quick video on how to create an advanced action in Captivate. I have this slide here and my intention is for an individual to click the button, the text will change, and some audio will play. That is pretty much all the functions that we're going to do here is just showing and hiding and changing the state of an object. I have already created my objects. You'll see if you click on this object, this is the shape that's going to change. And I have in the state view my information entered for each item. And all the states are labeled, you'll see, so that when I start creating my advance and action, it will be much simpler to do. I will know accessibility wise if you have text in each state you're going to need to put the accessibility text all of your text in here because different states don't always show up for readers so you need to have all of the text available it's up somewhere i have not done that part yet <clears throat> and then these buttons are i do have states i believe yeah i have a hover over state and whatnot but i don't have a visited let's add one Visited means you can do like a check mark on it. Let me see if I have one just right available. So I drag and drop it on the screen. I drag and drop everything. Make it a normal size and I say, okay. Look like there. I'm going to put it over here and make it small. Say so once it's visited, it's going to have this check mark show up. And so, exit state, I'm going to cover that for later. Exit state. And so, those are the things that I'm going to set up. I've also done, of course, shortcut keys for each item to keep it accessible as well. And now I'm ready to build my advanced action. I also have audio that I've pre recorded for each section, so that will be part of it as well. So we're gonna go to, I always said the wrong one, project advanced actions. This is not conditional, so we do not need to worry about a variable. And I'm gonna call this four key service. So I'm telling myself what slide it's on as well as which item I'm selecting. And so you want to say all the things you want it to do. I always say pause first so that if there's any audio playing, it won't start playing two audios at once. So it pauses the slide and the audio and starts with what um, ever they've clicked on. I'm going to have it Next, and it does things in order, so I tend to do what I would want to happen in order, though it's very quick, so it won't be noticeably different. Oh, did I just go past it? Well, I'll just hit it. Change state of. If you know what it starts with, you can hit the letter on the keyboard, and that actually makes it significantly easier. No, oh, it doesn't want to select. There we go. And then this is why you label your things, because I forgot to label. I'm actually going to. have to pick a random one. Nope, that's not right, but that's right. So I'm just save as action. So it's there for me to edit. Okay. This is an example of why you need to label your shapes. It's called smart shape 414 and there's no way for me to know what that is. So I'm gonna do four key more info. Oh, I didn't like the four first, sorry. out and now I can go back and finish it okay project it's actions and then to go back to an action you get to see this existing actions are here and you just click on it and it's going to show up and I can edit it change state of and I now do not want that one I want four key more info and then I want it to go to this is the customer service one so customer service 
at the same time, I want it to play audio. <clears throat> oh, I should also do a stop trigger audio. That's beside the point. Play audio, and I'm going to select a file. I, I also labeled them so it's easy to find. So customer service 29, which is okay. It's going to do that. I am also going to do stop triggered audio if they've clicked on a different button already it will pause whatever previous audio started playing and i'll put that at the top because we're going to do that before the other audio starts do i want anything else to happen no oh, i believe that's it so we're going to click update action it would be save action if it was a new one it tells you it's saved and then you can create the next one. So now we have to do the same for holistic service. So copy. It says duplicate, uh, blah, blah, blah. You want to just change it to holistic. And then you really just have to go in and change to holistic here, change holistic here, and you're done and update. So it's so quick. <clears throat> If you're going to be using a specific action a lot, you can create a shared action. I'm not showing you how to do that today, but it is a possibility and there are videos that exist about it. Not from me. <laughs> All right, so now we are at strength-based. And again, we're changing this to strength-based and this to strength based as well. And so if you end up having to add another thing that you wanted to do, like add a picture or show a button or hide something, you can go here and add an additional thing on the list. Update action. Okay. And then I want to copy again for the last one. Sorry, my furnace is loud. And then we change this one to result oriented and this one. Update action. Okay. Close. Once you have your actions chosen, all you have to do is assign them. I sometimes do a close button if I want them to be able to return to this screen because there's no other way for them to do that. I didn't on this slide. Um, actions, and I want to change this to execute advanced action and it guessed the right one because it's alphabetical I'm going to do hand cursor and disable click sound terrible noise and yes that looks good to me so perfect and then we're going to do the next one holistic and of course I'll also be needing to go back and do accessibility text on this buttons it's just not what I'm showing you right now so I'm not doing it the last one I'm assuming I made all those selections right and was paying attention. This should work. The key of any Captivate project is testing. I always do the HTML testing because their player just works better sometimes because it's theirs. And so this will find out additional glitches you may see. It always takes a minute. So now you always want to check your hover overs, make sure nothing weird happens, and then we're going to try clicking. And it plays audio. We haven't changed the state, so it's not going to check mark. All right, so if everything looks good and we are going to go back and fix those states, then you're good to go.
And really that is a basic advanced interaction. I end up using advanced interactions for almost every interaction because I always want audio to accompany it. It's a way to make it as accessible as possible. But there are so many more things you can do. And of course you can do the conditional actions which help you to do if statements basically in your design. So I believe that's all we're going to do. I will also have a handout available and just let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.